it's nice they already did the intros, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with me anyways. I'm going to close this door a little bit. Oh, one more coming. One more is coming. Okay. They can still come in now. It's not going to bother me. Um, so basically, I just wanted to give you guys an overview about what technology is available and how you can use it to better your personal life and your church Enrichment, I guess, is the right word. Um, I'm going to start by showing us a couple of videos that were on YouTube. I'm sure you guys have heard of YouTube before, but um, they kind of show a little bit of humor and how um, the internet works. And uh, we'll get started with that. Let me make sure it pulls up. Of course, right? Technology. Oh, it might not show YouTube on LDS Access. Let me put it on my hotspot then. Not YouTube. Yeah. On the hotspot. Really okay. Okay. Technical difficulties, right? just to kind of break the ice, but there is this other one that's quite humorous. I'm not going to take too much of your time, but... statistics. So this is the percentage of adults that actually use the internet. So you see that in 2000 it was about 50 percent and then now in 2016 it's close to 77. Let's see, what is it? Yeah, so 77. And then we also want to look at some statistics based on cell phones. So everybody pretty much owns a cell phone, right? So it's 95 percent. But the smartphones, only about 77 percent of people own smartphones, okay? So the difference between a regular cell phone and a smartphone is that there's other applications you can connect to the internet, there's other programs, and so we'll kind of go through some of the benefits. When I talk about a device, basically it means anything from your desktop computer that has a screen and a keyboard and everything at home to a laptop, tablets, smartphones, 
everything, basically that whole spectrum. So when I use the word device, that's basically what that means. Um, have you guys heard the word Wi-Fi? Everyone talks about Wi-Fi, right? I even had a little issue this morning with connecting to the Wi-Fi with the YouTube. Does anybody know what Wi-Fi means? We hear it all the time, right? So basically, it is a trademarked word. It's actually a brand, if you can imagine that. So just like Nike or Coca-Cola or something, it's a brand. And so it actually means um, wire wireless fidelity. Have you guys used to hear the word hi-fi, like high fidelity? That's basically a play on words where they wanted to have something wirelessly fidelity. So it's kind of just a made up thing that this company thought, oh, this sounds cool. And as you can see, you know, it's got the um, archways of the broadcasting the symbol, so that's what that is. Um, basically boils down to the internet. It's just a wireless connection to the internet. Um, when you come to church buildings, you know it shows up as LDS Access, and it all has the same password, and I will show you guys that on the, when we break out into groups. So basically, we have settings. So on each device that we use, we can set it up where these user preferences to help us feel like it's engaged, or that we can set it to what we use it for. And when you look for settings, it's basically shaped like a gear, okay? Um, it can sometimes be within applications or part of the actual devices settings, if that makes sense. Sometimes you can find your wireless connection or your Wi-Fi through this symbol as well. Um, and then we got applications, okay? Most people have heard the word app, right? It's, I'm going to download this application. It's basically just a program ran on whatever device you're using. A lot of times people will, if they're using a Apple device, it's called an app store. Or if it's an Android device, which basic, a lot of other ones that are less expensive um, are using Google Play. So those are your two downloads for applications. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is just the basic search tool, okay? So we all know that there's like a magnifying glass, right? That's kind of how we can see or search things. So anything that has a search, you can put in a, a field. So that will... Basically, you can touch it if you have a touch screen or click on it if you have a mouse. Um, and that will give you a whole range of things, whether you want to look for a website, you're searching for an application that is, do, it does a certain thing. Um, so that's kind of what that means. And if you get to use it in your web browser, you can use it. Um, there's a, some of them that have microphones, too. Have you ever seen the little teeny microphone? So you can touch the microphone and actually speak. because. I know it's hard to touch sometimes those teeny little buttons with your fingers, and touch screens aren't always the best user-friendly, so it's really cool to use that microphone if you can. Um, email, okay, we talked about that a little bit in the introduction, but basically email is just electronic mail. So anybody that is on the internet can have an email account based through Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, um, and it has whatever they want as their user name goes in front, and then the domain, which is the Google or the Yahoo, goes after, and it's usually a .com, a .org, anything like that. So that's just basically what that is, and we can go through some of the steps for those. Just a show of hands, how many people have email accounts already? Do we all? Okay. So that's good. Um, did someone else set them up for you? Mm -hmm. For the most part? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. I think asking for help is probably the best thing you can do. So I want to talk about how LDS Tools and the LDS Libraries, these are the two applications that the church actually sponsors and keeps up to date um, for our use, our personal use and for church callings. So the icon looks like this for LDS Tools, okay? And basically that gives you access to your ward level, your personal information. It has your membership ID. Um, anything that has to do with your church records, so when you were baptized, when you got your endowments, anything like that is accessible through there. And then it gives you almost like a directory for your ward and your stake, and you can see what people's callings are. It's just a really awesome tool, and it helps, it helps kind of keep everybody in connection, because I know we used to print phone books and, you know, things like that, and they'd get out of date or they'd have a wrong phone number. You can go in and change anything on your own personal on this anytime, so it's really helpful. The libraries basically gives you a resource that accesses any of the enzymes that have been published, uh, past conference addresses. It also touches on um, 
lesson plans for any of your callings that you have. Uh, there's a wide variety, and of course the scriptures. Okay, so you can read that from your phone, tablet, computer. It's really nice because you can actually play in within there, and it'll you can listen to these things too. So I like to do it in the car um, on my on my phone, so you can listen to that through these things. So when you get these set up, you do have to have a um, a login, and you have to have your membership ID to get those logged in. So we can talk about downloading those. So you can get that off of your um, Temple Recommend or just talk to one of your bishop members and they can get you your membership ID <laughs> if you don't have that. So you need an email and your membership ID to first set up your accounts. How many of you guys have these on your devices already? Okay, good. But, but I can't play mine when I'm in the car. What am I doing wrong? It might be that your phone service or your tablet might not have connection to the internet because it does need a live connection to the internet when it plays it. If it's just mm -hmm. Reading, it can access it, but that voice, you know, the nice calming man's voice that comes on, um, that's why. It's because if you don't have your data turned on or you have limited um, access to your phone or your tablet, that it might have an issue with the connection. But if so it started where it does work, it'll finish whatever chapter or whatever you're on and then it won't go to the next right. one. So if you are in a wireless range, like in the church or at your house, um, it'll kind of load to the next chapter. But if you leave any type of connection without having your own data connection, it actually um, will disconnect. It'll finish off and it won't connect. Jim? So I have the library, mm -hmm. but so the, the tool one, mm -hmm. That's different? Yeah, LBS yeah. Tools is a different application. So. And it needs to sync every once in a while because you know how things change in the ward. But it's it, you use the same login as you would with your LBS library mm -hmm. um, as you do with your LBS Tools. Everything, I, I pay my tithing online with that login as well. Under the tool? Under, well, just with the login is what I'm oh, going to. Nice. But the tools, yeah, the the, I think they only do donations through the website, which is lds.org slash donations. Because I do donations online, too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the tools are different. We'll get you guys a handout in a second. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so basically I just want to go through some of these icons that may look like mysterious things and you don't want to know, you don't know what to touch and what not to touch. So if any time you want to save or download something, so that means that you don't have to necessarily have connection to the internet. Your device has an internal memory, so you can actually save it down and access that without having connections to the internet. So that's what that arrow means. It's usually an arrow going down. It looks a couple of different ways, but that's basically what that'll look like. See, sometimes it looks like this, or even this. Okay, so we've got a cloud. Have you guys heard that terminology before? Basically, a cloud just means that it's stored off-site. So you will probably need access to the internet to access that cloud. It just doesn't take up the memory on your device. It's off-site, if that kind of makes sense. All right, the next one we're going to talk about is sharing or forwarding. So if you saw that video, for example, you know, we want to share it with everybody we know, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. There's this little tool, and to me, I look at it as like you're the first circle and you want to share it with two other people. So that's kind of what I look at. You can see that at the bottom of a link, so a link you could copy it, or it'll just forward and say, how do you want to share this? Whether it's a message, an email, and it'll show different little icons and choices for that. Sometimes it looks like this, so it's an arrow forward, like you're just forwarding an email. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. And then this is also, so your arrow is going up. Instead of downloading it, you're sharing it and forwarding it. Um, social media, I think, you know, we've got some statistics that I'll show you in a second, but we're all kind of familiar with some of the basic ones like Facebook and YouTube, but there's probably hundreds, you know, and they're always changing depending on what people's needs are and what they're sharing. Instagram's a really popular one just because people love visual things as far as photos, okay? So that's more of a photo access site. Um, Facebook. That's one that basically you can connect with your friends and share things on posts and, you know, different things like that. The one in the middle on the bottom that kind of looks like one of the Pac-Man guys, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's called Snapchat, and a lot of younger kids are using that. Um, and it's basically video and photo sharing in 
individual. It's not like posting to a board where all your friends can see it. It's like an individual in exchange with someone else. Um, LinkedIn, this is the in one. That one I use professionally. Uh, it's basically like a resume and it's a very um, business oriented one. So you can go and see what someone's experience is. You can interact with them and say, hey, I feel like we might work well together on a business level. Or So it's still a social because they're communicating with each other, but it's just more professional. It's not like family life and sharing photos. Um, Twitter is really popular as far as just quick things, okay? People look at their Twitter feed is what they call it, and um, they'll go through it and swipe and swipe and swipe, and really they're just trying to find something that gets their attention. But really it's not something that is an interactive thing. It still has Messenger and you can share photos and stuff, but it's not quite as um, beneficial as the other. And then YouTube, of course, is a great asset, especially when you want to learn more. Um, that's going to be part of the resources that we'll talk about later. So anything that's videoed um, visually, it does tutorials on there. It has funny videos. Whatever you're looking for, um, even TV shows and movies you can find on there. So if you have an internet connection, that's how that works. All right, so here's some statistics about social media use. The percentage of adults that are using at least one of any of the social media things out there, look how in 2006 it was almost close to zero. Okay. And now we're after we're like right around seventy percent. How many of you guys have at least one social media account? The majority of you don't have one. Okay, so see that's about seventy percent. So it's it's definitely something that people are utilizing more. It, it, it's a little bit scary and overwhelming. Even if you have an account, some people don't even use it. They're more observers, if that makes sense, instead of engagers. And that's totally fine because you don't want to feel like out of the loop, you know. And that's where people go, especially in small rural rural communities because, you know, the newspaper comes out once a week or even places that don't even have newspapers. I mean, I know Cokeville doesn't anymore. And so it's just one of those things that people try to stay connected as a community and it's the quickest and fastest way to get information out. Um, so browsers, okay, you guys have heard this word before. This you can use on your any device. Um, basically, it's just the, the application that's used to access the internet. So we, shop, we saw where we had the search bar and you can type in whatever information. You just want to make sure you type in www, which means World Wide Web, dot whatever it is, if you have a specific address that you're going to, and then dot com, dot org, dot edu. I mean, I'm sure you guys are familiar with some of those um, and things. Or you can just type in the browser and it'll basically bring up their default search um, thing. And they'll just, you guys have heard of Google. So Chrome is the middle one, Internet Explorer is on the right, Firefox is the top one with the fox, and then that one is called Safari, which is mostly used in Apple. So if you have like an iPhone, that would probably be the default browser for you. All right, so here's some resources. We've got the YouTube videos. So I talked about how you can easily go there and type anything. I mean, I call it YouTube University, but you guys can call it whatever you want, but there is literally millions and millions of videos and being posted even like every day it's crazy um, and you guys are capable of doing the same thing when you set up an email account typically gmail google those types of relationships they are the same company owners as youtube so if you have a gmail account or a facebook account they you can log into that but you don't even have to have an account to use their services if that makes sense um, the local library. I know that a lot of times if you just stop into the local library, they have access to computers. You can sit down and ask them questions and do your own research. And then my very favorite is to get your children or grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those things that just ask people. I think that will be a good connection that you can connect with your kids <coughs> or your grandchildren to say, hey, look, can you show me how to do this? And I think it, they would, they may be annoyed, but I think at the same time they might be humored by the fact that you're asking. I don't know, maybe not, but it'll create a good um, connection as far as that goes. So I just want to kind of say, is are we kind of trying to resist this force, or are we going to try to embrace it? You know, is this going to be a friend or a foe to what we want to accomplish in our life? And I think that it's a choice. You know, we get to all choose what we want to do and how we want to use it. But we're just going to break into groups. It looks like you guys all have email accounts, but. Um, I just want to make sure that we 
address any concerns that you guys might have. So let's go ahead and write on the board maybe some challenges or questions that you guys have, and then we can kind of go from there as far as answering the hands-on type of stuff. Do you guys have any specific questions about what I talked about or Yes, I have a question. It isn't exactly what you talked about, but um, when you get a notice from something, how do you know if it's real or not? It's a good question. So a lot of times people will um, target people technology-wise, if you want to pass those around, uh, through email. So that it's called phishing is basically what they call it. And um, it turns into them trying to get more information, like private information, whether it's your mother's maiden name or social security. Okay, so anything that has credibility, they will mail you something in the mail. You will never get a notice off of an email from the IRS or from the social security office or anything that is legit like that. Definitely, definitely avoid that. I don't know. I mean, that might not be common knowledge because a lot of times things seem really legit and real. So, for example, if you shop on Amazon even, and you get an email from Amazon, which is typical. You know, you may get a receipt after you purchase something, or they may notify you of something like that. But it, these scammers can have things look very, very legit. The reason, the way that you can question it is go log into your actual um, Amazon account, and they have a, their own communication system within there. So even if they email it, anyone can have access to your emails. They have these uh, robots or these things that basically generate as many email combinations as you possibly can and it may hit yours, if you're on saying. And so it doesn't mean that it's legit just because you get an email and it seems to be legit. Calling directly to the place, hey, I received an email about this. Is that something that you needed to talk to me about? That's always the best way of communication. I know it's convenient to text and to send emails, but really it turns into that legitimacy thing, like you're exposing your information, especially on Facebook. There's so many um, cookies, they call them, that tie to what your search patterns are, and they start targeting, have you guys ever searched for something, and all of a sudden there's this ad that's like, come to Hawaii, and it's like, how did they know I was looking for Hawaii? Like, it's kind of creepy, you know? And so I think having both in-life connections and resources through phone, um, and mailing just to verify that you're not getting duped. Is that kind of the question that you're asking or was it more? Well, what happened with me was I was just online and all of a sudden I got this notice that said that um, there was a danger, you know, there was a okay. harm and that I should call this number. So right. I did. <laughs> and then they wanted all this money right. to do all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. And then they had my computer locked. I couldn't. Yep couldn't do anything. Yep. So I called my children. Yes. <laughs> yes. If something like that comes up, I would um, shut down your device. That's what they're talking about. Yeah, just shut it down because what ends up happening is there's these people that make it look really legit and they say, oh, you know, you're you're compromised. We're going to help you yeah. protect yourself from people like them, basically. And it's not the truth. Like, there's a lot of things that pop up and they just didn't want you to push buttons. Like even before, when I went to go try to find mine, I had some Mac cleaner, click here, did it, and I just closed it out mm -hmm. or um, shut down my computer. That's the best way to handle those because really when it comes to software, you don't want to download anything off the internet that isn't been approved through the application process or that it's needed. You know, So if it doesn't come through on your app store or on your um, Google Play, which is, you know, those applications to find other applications, then I would definitely avoid it. So yeah, it's it's hard because it looks, and you're like, oh, well, I don't want to be compromised. I want to protect my computer, so. I well, hope, and it's scary helps. because um, I do online banking and, and, you know, I pay my tithing online and all this stuff, and then I think, well, what if they get into that, mm -hmm. you know? As long, that's a great way to, you know, stay organized and keep track of everything is doing it online. Just make sure that you um, log out of those things and that they aren't just sitting open while you're searching other things. You know, a lot of times your banking people will have a time limit and it'll kick you out automatically and they do that for your protection. And they're really good. They understand what people are getting hit up about. So that's not um, 
you know, too, I wouldn't stay on there too long if there's a way you can download your statements and then review it so you're not actually online, if that makes sense. Um, anytime you have a browser open, uh, you're, you're a little bit susceptible to opening up what you're searching about. So that's kind of a good way to do it. Just limit your time on there, but at the same time, uh, using wireless, um, public wireless, don't go online and have your bank stuff or anything personal. I mean, checking your email once in a while, that's fine, but anything bank-related or, you know, that has private information. So is it best not to use your phone for any of your banking stuff? You can, as long as you're, it's on your personal Wi-Fi that has some okay, security so. or on your data, that's okay. But it's when you go to a coffee shop or something that offers mm -hmm. free Wi-Fi or even here, there's somebody that could be out there in the lawn and seeing the any information that you share. So, what was your question? I, it is just probably really simple, but if I have a picture on my phone mm -hmm. and I want to send it to my daughter, how do I do that? Right, so <clears throat> it's so nice with smartphones now because everything's kind of in one, right? We've got photos, video, and everything we want and not just have it sit in our phones, right? So basically when I was showing you the share option, a lot of times when you click on the picture, it kind of gives you an option, depending on what your device is, it kind of gives you an option whether you want to forward it or share it. And you can do that through the social media, like you can either post it and post it directly to that person, or you can send it to their phone directly, whether it's through a message or through um, the um, email. So basically, you just show me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so here's my, here's my phone. This is an iPhone, though, so okay. it's a little bit different. And here's the video I just, we just did. Um, I was taking a picture of cute Terry and, mm -hmm. <laughs> Terry and yeah. TR. Sorry, I was going to show Joe about what was going on today. Um, and so see how I click, I just touched it. So before I was just viewing it, you know. Um, this is just viewing it. And then I touch it. And then there's my little arrow on the bottom right. Mm -hmm. So that's what gives you the options to. And you push that. Push yep, see, and then it kind of check marks. So if you want to send multiple ones, mm -hmm. see how you can check mark each little item. Mm -hmm. so and then you, you can decide. It? Uh, you just, just touch, touch it. it. Yep. Okay. okay. Or untouch it. Mm -hmm. And so look, you can say, oh, I want to assign this to a contact. Have you ever seen where if people are calling you, a photo shows up? So you can take a picture of the person and assign it to a contact mm -hmm. and attach it to there. Um, so yeah, you can either send it in an email, so there's your mail, and you can mm -hmm. get that set up through your device, or you can send it to a message, and that would mean just typing in their phone number or typing in their name if they're already a contact. So how do you do that? So you just touch, let's say I'm going to send it to my husband, so oh, I will. Okay. And then, you know, it'll come up to mm -hmm. um, Joe. And so then it'll just show up right there in the message. Have you guys received text messages with photos in them before? Then you send it with that. Yep, and that's just like, oh, there's the arrow up, right? Because the arrow up means you're wanting to send it away. So I'll just send that to him, and then it comes back to the photo. I take pictures of everything. It's basically like a scanner. It's like, well, you know, we've got our notepads and things, but we lose those. But this I always carry with me, and so I'll take a picture of something and go, oh, yeah, that's right. I need to take that. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there another question that you guys have about, I mean, we can write them on the board or just kind of do a more Q&A? Is there a way on emails on my phone? I get so many, and it's just a bunch of, one will say, thank you for your order, Amazon, or thank you for your order at Kohl's, and I've never placed any orders. Right. So, yeah, there is a way to... On your phone, it's a little bit harder because, you know, you can't say junk mail or try to flag it quite as easily. But I actually use I mean, I just a, go through a delete about mm -hmm. 100 a day. It's such a pain, I know. It's such a pain. I know what you're talking about. There is a website that is called, let's see if I can even find it. I haven't used it for so long, but it it's awesome. Um that basically flags, like you can say, I don't want to see anything that has this. In That's it. what I wanted. And yeah. it, I haven't used it for a while, so let me see if I can find I it. Just think, oh, every day you have to go through there and just get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And you do it three, four times a day. Yeah, yeah. No, there's still. I might have to send that back out. Oh, what is that called? It's like a spam. Spam management or something, so you could probably search spam 
management or spam email management. And it'll come up. I have all these emails for my class. That's why there's like tons. Um, oh, that's not I'll find it eventually. Maybe so by the end of this. Send or whatever. Yeah, maybe we'll like have it as like a. Um, that's helped a lot with getting some of that junk email because I mm -hmm. I'm the kind of person that doesn't like to see the little red notifications. <laughs> you know, if it says like 20, I'm like, oh, who is that? And it's mm -hmm. mostly junk. Junk. Yeah. And so yeah, it's really nice to be able to clean that up every once in a while. Um, see, I'm going through all this junk mail, but hmm. Well, I'll keep looking. Is there other questions you guys have about sharing or different applications or just technology usage in general? Because we've got about... Um, I have a question as far as when you fact finger something and you don't know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to reverse it. <laughs> oh, when you want to reverse it. So it depends on what you're doing. A lot of times there's kind of a, a back button or a cancel or on my device, I have the option to kind of double click this mm -hmm. and it shows you, you know, have you ever seen how you have tons of like windows and things open and you're like, mm -hmm. why, why are these all open? And so that way you can kind of just close it. Yeah. So that's what I would do is if you get stuck, it's just like, oh, okay, I'm going to go out so I can see all of it and just close that whole application. Mm -hmm. And I swipe up, but I think there's other ways of doing it depending on what device you're on. I think mine has a clear all or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah clear all. Clear. And that's the way to, I know that it's kind of hard to do undo or go back because you might be in a certain process, but that's just so that a lot of times it gets an email, for example, and you messed up or something, it'll save it as a draft. So if you close out your program, you can go back in and sometimes it'll like pick up where you left off. They're pretty smart that way, like they like kind of track what you're trying to do, but... Well, what I, I, I had my phone set up to where I could get my emails on my phone, mm -hmm. and then I did something, and I can't remember what it was, and then all of a sudden, I can't get my emails on my phone again. Oh, okay. So that might be something where you can go into your settings, so like the gear Well, see, section. I checked that, and, and it, yeah, and I got it to go connected. once. But no. then it started, I don't know if it was the phone or if it's, you know, something that I'm doing. Yeah, sometimes just resetting the phone, like I know that's kind of no-no, but if you've saved all your emails like me or your photos and the things you want to keep, because mm -hmm. your LDS tools, for example, and your scripture stuff, that will all be saved off of there. It's not like it's on your phone, really. And so if you need to do a hard reset or just reset your phone, you can YouTube. How do I reset this dot 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 phone, mm -hmm. and it'll show through the steps, and that way it might give you a clean slate because sometimes that memory almost gets you in trouble because you're like, no, that's what's wrong with it. I don't want you to remember that, and so sometimes just resetting, or you could even type not just resetting your phone, but how do I specifically reset my email, and then it can show you step by step through the video. It's really actually pretty fantastic how many tutorials and stuff. It's like, oh, if this happens, then you'll want to do this. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it's almost kind of interactive in a way. Um, but other than that, it's it's uh, it's kind of frustrating sometimes I get that, but it's that's why I was kind of saying that friend or foe. Like sometimes you get frustrated and it is a love-hate. Like I even still feel that way about technology. It's a love-hate thing. And um, I think the more we use it, the easier it becomes. And so I think that you know, the bottom line is just don't give up because it's not going anywhere. Unfortunately, we try to kind of say, well, I don't need an email and I don't need this. It, it's not going anywhere. We really just need to kind of embrace it as best we can and try to have a positive attitude about it. But um, I just want to make sure that there's not anything major that you guys feel hasn't been addressed. Like, I don't know if that answered your question. Or... Uh, it gives me some place to go. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely say this is my mail program. Can you help me figure out what's going on, Lucy? So, I use my phone to text a lot at yes. work. And so, and it's all password protected, right. but they, my kids put my email on there too. 
So it's put those two things together. Work. My personal one. Okay. Do I need to just get the email off of my phone? Because I thought I would separate them, and then yeah. I deleted all kinds of stuff that I don't know. Ooh. You know. I'm, and so um, I don't know how to keep those two separate because neither one of them needs to be connected. No, no. When I have, I have four different emails. I mean, it's ridiculous, but I have four. And so when I've set up my, you can look at it as all boxes, and that's where you see all of them. You're like, I don't know which one email account this came from and which one didn't. But then I have like my business one, the room to roam, and then exchange is our work one for the hospital. And then here's my personal Gmail account. So they are actually separate email accounts. And so instead of when you go into your settings and you're setting this up, you want to say add account and just make sure that they don't all go in the same one. So you can look at them that way, so it might just be the way you're viewing it instead of being able to check which box you want to look mm -hmm. at. So do you have an iPhone? Is that what you use? No. Okay. I don't know what I have. Um, <laughs> I think you just took care of me. Like a Samsung or something. I take care of everything. I don't even have a password to um, do it. <laughs> yeah, this is divvied out. This is divvied out, but I'm wondering if it's just maybe a setting change that we can look into settings and say uh, breakout boxes or if there's ways to, um, I'm trying to think, like, I think they call them inboxes, okay. mm -hmm. to just set up different inboxes. And I thought, they, I think they were pretty sure, and they're very distressed that I use it for work, but it doesn't work at home, so I, I love, love, using I it love having work email. It. And there's a ton it's of really people, especially from my office, that would just sit and have a text. Just to Instead of the email. Yeah. Yeah, text messaging is definitely very convenient. It's right. one of those things that people almost, I check text messages more than email. You know, I don't open up my email all the time, all, all day long, unless I'm sitting in front of yeah. my computer at work. Um, so it just kind of depends on, you can't really send documents, you know, you're not going to attach a document in a text. It's usually just photos and quick things like, oh, I'm going to be there in five minutes or something. Yeah, and it's directions. basically, remember to come see me at this day of the time. Have That's you guys ever heard of, like, I didn't even know what this was, but dropping a pin? Have you ever heard that terminology? Okay, I didn't even know what it was, so if that makes you feel any better. <laughs> but um, basically, it's a new thing where kids are saying, oh, I'll text you the directions, let's say, for example. And they're like, oh, no, just drop me a pin. And you're like, what is that? Oh, I did hear that recently. Yeah, yeah. It's it's basically means that when you're on a map, you know how you can use maps and navigation, oh, you know, how the yeah. old GPS systems mm -hmm. that you'd have in your car, well, that are on your phone now, too, right? Right. So basically, instead of um, sending them, okay, this is the address, you turn here and turn here, you actually send them, like, the pin, you know, the little shaped oh, pin. Yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, that's what it's called. So the little shaped thing that's kind of like this. Yeah. Yeah. All these ladies have email addresses, Marie. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a pin, you know, so it kind of shows you where you want to be in there. And so this little thing, you just, like, forward it, you know, so you've got the little arrow, forward it to their text message, oh. and then it gives them where you're at. Oh. So do you just so you touch have, that? Yeah, you just touch your little thing. So like if you pull up your maps, I was telling them, have you ever heard of dropping a pin? Have yeah, people, I, I know I haven't even heard about it, but apparently it's a new thing, so I'm trying to sh keep them up on the thing. So right now it shows me I'm on my maps here. See how it's got the little thing there? So if I want to say, oh, I need to show them where the hospital is. See how the hospital came up with a pin? Mm -hmm. It's kind of shaped with an X, but normally they wouldn't do that if it wasn't there. So then you just take that and see the share arrow, share up, mm -hmm. and then you just share up, and you say, okay, there, text message it to them. Mm -hmm. And that's what they say, oh, just drop me a pin. So if you hear that terminology, that's what it means. Like, oh, well, I don't really know how to do that, but I just thought that was interesting. That I learned hey, that now we can go ago. and press our kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just drop me a pin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I learned today. No. Yeah. All right, I think we're getting close to wrapping up, right? So is there any other so, final questions? <clears throat> this is probably everybody knows this. But if you're using the Wi-Fi at the church and want to use it in your classroom, mm -hmm. what's the procedure? Okay, so on the handouts that I gave you, um, there is a... So you want to look for the Wi-Fi symbol, you know. Sometimes it'll just pop up automatically, okay. like, do you want to connect? Okay, and then oh, okay. you just click LDS access. 
okay. and that should get you there. And the password's actually on here as well. So it is okay. the capital P Pioneer 47. Okay. And so you only have to do that once on the device, per device. And then when you come automatically, it'll just set and that up. works okay. in any church right. where it's at. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So this is a really helpful tool to kind of go through and explain what everything is. And like I said, if you don't have the LDS tools, it's a really cool thing to download. You just make, have to make sure you have that LDS account set up, which will need an email and your... So do you find that in the, your app? Yeah, you just search okay. LDS tools. Cool. Um, and it syncs every time. So it's really quite the most up-to-date access or resource that you have for that. I went to our Lord's Memorial Day breakfast, mm -hmm. met President Tischer's daughter who lives in Colorado now, and her husband said, oh, I think we have a, a name on our ward list. They happen to be in my inactive sister's ward. He pulled that up, checked it out. She said, oh, I'm in the Relief Society presidency. Yep. You know and exactly what their calling is, yeah. everything. And, and so now she can go visit my terribly inactive sister who's yeah. amazing. But, you know, yeah. we it's can that create it's right really there. right there. And yeah. I know the bishop, our bishop, uses it a lot. Um, you know, he, he is a younger bishop, but at the same time, I think that it's so easy because for, like, ecclesiastical endorsements, for example, when I'm going to BYU-Idaho, I have to um, show the fact that I am endowed member. And so he can go on and say, oh yeah, she's got a current temple recommend, and go, Doof, and it's done. So I don't actually have to right. meet with him and have okay. paperwork signed and fax it in or mail it off or something. It's just very, very online. Young women use personal progress online now, the scouting wow. program, just different things like that. Your secretaries and clerks. Yeah, that login, that login with your membership ID, that is tithing track. Your right. calling, everything you can imagine, baptism and family dates, history. confirmation dates, <laughs> and family history, that's a whole other I application. I paper with my Lisa calling and it's all online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can change all of your, call, you know, your sisters and stuff through that. It's kind of funny, but we kept, I come home and there would be a message on my phone. Um, Hi, Krista. Um, So-and-so is, there was a funeral in town. Is, is Aunt so-and-so staying at your house or is she going to stay at my house? And I thought, that's not my number. Oh. And it kept coming different times. It was through there. The well, the, our telephone number got put in there through LDS Tools. Oh, oh like it was a mistake on yeah. their end. On, on oh. their end. And so I told them, <laughs> like, I said, how do you fix this on LDS Tools? So we had to go to our board clerk to get that fixed. Yeah, make sure you update with your board clerk. So if you don't update it, it doesn't update in the computer. Yeah, you can I think that's the biggest thing we've found. Exactly. Some people have not updated their like, new cell phone numbers and stuff. And, and then, then they, they disconnect their own numbers and there's no way to get a hold of them. Oh. So if you don't update, right. they won't know to update. So it's really important that's to get your own information. Yeah, you can only access your own information. information. You can't go on to someone else's yeah, and change it. That's only true. You know, so it's like we got to find the source of where this, our telephone number got put into this other person's and you always have to ask the people calling you, who are you trying to get a hold of? Yeah, yeah that's what we'd call back. We'd say, um, you've got the wrong number. And they said, no, we don't. And I said, well, you're talking to me. And obviously, that's not who you want to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever gotten someone else's text message to and you're like, who are you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who is this? That's At work, I got a text creepy. from a client. And she was looking for a $20 bag. And I went to our local anti-drug person, Wayne. And I said, what's she what? asking for? Oh, oh, yeah, like if you oh have more than one, if you have more than one Lucy or something in there, it can be, you guys have to be I think she mass texted it because she was oh. desperate for she was some kind there. of drug. She didn't even care what kind of drug she It was got. a group text. It was then. a group. Yeah, you guys get group texts. Sometimes it's annoying, <laughs> so, right? Because everybody yeah. gets uh -huh. replies. Yes. Okay. So that's she like was a soliciting note, drugs from me. Oh. So it was kind of interesting. We got a good laugh out of it. Wow. <laughs> All right. And you can so. a group text. You can go up and click on it and ask to not get notifications for it, too. Yeah, you can block people's numbers, too. So if you're getting calls for people that you know you're never going to contact again, there is an option to select the phone number. Usually it's a little I, like an information I next to the phone number. And you can um, select that to block the caller. So if you get, oh, I get tons of spam calls. If it's an out of area, I don't answer it, you know. Yeah. But you can block all of those as they come in through that little information thing. So, yeah. 
Another thing, right. when you go into your, you say that your memory's getting full, so you go into your app, and this list comes this long. Mm -hmm. You don't know which ones to keep and which ones to get rid of. I know. Sometimes apps, I, I delete I and add from. apps as I need them. So like, for example, I know Cafe Rio has some rewards program, and I love Cafe Rio. So you have to download the little thing to get your, scan your stuff and get your rewards, but then I delete it afterwards because I don't want it sitting there. But then it's easier the next time because it goes to this cloud. It knows I've downloaded it before and it keeps my information, but it's not taking up the memory on my device. So you can actually delete it. Have you guys ever deleted apps yes, before? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it comes up, deleting this app could make your phone malfunction. That one you should delete probably. Yeah. Yeah, maybe not that <laughs> one. Your apps, though, you should can delete are the ones that you get from the Play Store. Anything you get from the Play Store, you can delete. Can delete yeah, there's yeah. some that are just hardwired in there that, that are like that maps <laughs> and your contacts and messaging <laughs> stuff like that. And those are just basic functions of your phone. Like my hobby <laughs> lobby is that way because I don't use it all the time. So when I go to a hotel, I'll download it back down yeah, so you can use your, your discounts <laughs> off of it. And, but it always pulls your information back up. So you don't have to re-put everything back in.